Good evening. Welcome to another session of our Career Aspiration at HKU series uh, featuring big data in arts and business. My name is Yang and I'm your host today. Today we're going to be talking about data and technology in the fields of arts and business, uh, which uh, I assume to many is not traditionally associated with big data. However, with big data being used more extensively in today's world, we see lots of new interactions between these previously separated domains, and that's the purpose of why we have this session. And today we are delighted to have Dr. Anya Adair, uh, Program Director of the Batch of Arts in Humanities and Digital Technologies, and Dr. Peter Cobb from the same program team, as well as Dr. Ting Ting Fan, Program Director a batch of science in marketing analytics and technology joining us and sharing their insights on how these two new undergraduate programs in arts and business are preparing students for more interdisciplinary understanding of their respective fields. After the sharing, we will then invite Edwin from the admissions office to talk about the program's admissions requirements. And during the session, you are very much welcome to uh, take advantage of the Q&A section in the webinar. Um, you can type out any questions that you have throughout the session. And towards the end of the session, we will be addressing them. Um, so now, without further ado, I would like to pass the time um, to Dr. Adair to talk about the Batch of Arts in Humanities and Digital Technologies. So Dr. Adair, can you please start us off? Doctor, there you might need you might want to yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Um, hello everyone. I'm delighted to present this information about a new degree program that we have in the Faculty of Arts called the Bachelor of Arts in Humanities and Digital Technologies. I'm just going to talk about the program for five minutes, and then of course towards the end there will be plenty of time for questions. This is a new degree program. Uh, um, and it's very first time running will be this year in the 2022 intake. This program is the first of its kind, not just in Hong Kong, but across Asia. And it joins a select number of programs at elite universities around the world that have brought together the traditional Bachelor of Arts degree, which is a humanities program with the idea of digital technology. What we do here is we train students in digital tools and methods, including the methods that have come to be called big data, the uh, ways of thinking about and working with data across a number of digital fields. We aim in our program to equip future leaders with really up to date technological knowledge, with innovative thinking skills, problem solving ability, and the ability to work specifically with data across a number of different uh, uh, fields. We think that students who graduate with our degree should be future leaders across a big range of global industries. So like the traditional arts degree, we're not aiming to put students vocationally into one specific career path, but to qualify them for a range of different careers. We think our students should be creative thinkers and innovators in the digital space capable of building new things and working with others to solve problems. We think that our students should be able to apply real skills in the area of digital technology to the problems that they uncover as they study the humanities in an increasingly global world. So first of all, what is the humanities? In the degree, we consider ourselves to have two different areas. The one is the traditional humanities focus of the Bachelor of Arts degree. And the second is what we're bringing together with the arts in this new program, our interdisciplinary digital technologies focus. So in the traditional humanities part of the degree, students study all the standard areas uh, of the Faculty of Arts, subjects like art history or Chinese language or Chinese literature, comparative literature, English studies, including literature and linguistics, French, general linguistics, history, Japanese, music, philosophy, translation. If you want to hop on the HKU's Faculty of Arts website, you can see all the massive range of areas that we offer courses in. So students in this degree can take a specialization in any one of those areas. In addition to that, they will take an interdisciplinary digital technologies focus. Interdisciplinary here means we're connecting digital thinking with the traditional study areas of the Bachelor of Arts. 
So we will take a pure digital science course that will stu our students will move over into computer science and take that course along with statisticians and computer scientists. They'll also take an introductory course in computer programming, and they'll take a range of humanities and digital technologies specialized advanced interdisciplinary electives, which will develop within the Faculty of Arts itself. These might be courses like um, build, how to build an app, or how to work with data, or how to create a new kind of database, or how to search for information in a specialized way across, uh, across the web. And finally, um, towards the top of the program, we have an internship that is guaranteed that can be taken in year three or year four. And we'll aim to place our students with either commercial companies or nonprofits. And like all Bachelor of Arts students, there'll be exchange opportunities to travel overseas. And finally, students will take a capstone project, uh, a, for a fourth and final year research project supported by our new arts technology lab which will allow them to bring together their digital skills and their humanities skills. After graduation, we would expect our students to be able either to continue further studies across a huge range of fields from the humanities, but also in digital humanities, humanities computing, digital media and information studies, and to move on to globally leading research institutions, like University College London, University of Chicago, etc. I should point out that the only area of the humanities in which the number of qualified graduates is fewer than the number of jobs available, that is to say the only field uh, in humanities academia where there's an urgent need for qualified people is in this area of digital humanities. But in the um, commercial employment arena, there are a huge range of opportunities here as well. Our graduates from across the Bachelor of Arts often move into careers, including marketing, communications, consultancy, management, and a range of other fields, journalism, teaching, and so forth. What we've discovered is that employers increasingly really value candidates who can work with data and who can work in the digital arena. And that's what we're aiming uh, to qualify our students with. I'll turn over to you, Peter, to talk about this slide. Thank you so much. We are so excited about this new program, this new Bachelor's uh, in Humanities and Digital Technologies. And um, you will have so many opportunities to engage in real hands-on work in many, many different humanities fields if, uh, here at HKU. I'll just uh, briefly mention one that I'm involved in. I am an archaeologist. Archaeologists go and, and dig things up to understand the human past through the material things that people uh, leave behind. And today that means we need to digitize this. We need to turn this into databases and big data. And so in my project, people, students would have an opportunity to travel abroad, to travel internationally to Armenia, where I work in the summers, uh, to and participate in things like 3D scanning, uh, creating databases and doing mapping, uh, and using special technologies such as uh, GNSS, GPS, or drones. So lots of opportunities and we hope to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. So um, there'll be opportunities later to talk more about what the potential career opportunities are and I can share some, some particular stories of our students uh, from the Bachelor of Arts program who have gone on to work with digital um, with digital ideas in their future studies or future work. But for now, I will just very quickly go over um, some of the admissions issues. We'll, there'll be an opportunity to talk more about this, so I don't want to spend very long on these slides, but I just will say that there are entrance scholarships for Bachelor of Arts programs that are merit-based and there are awards for full tuition fees. And we also have a guaranteed global exploration fund to students to really push our idea that moving overseas and getting an overseas experience is an important part of the degree. Uh, admissions works as the standard way in this degree, just like the other degree programs. Students can apply through DUPAS or through non-DUPAS. And then there is the joint college entrance examination for the mainland admissions scheme. 
What do you need that's a little bit different here? Again, I don't want to spend too long on this. Um, the, the requirements for this particular degree program, because it's more selective entry, are slightly higher across the range of categories. But I do want to emphasize that we don't expect the students coming into this new degree to be fundamentally different from the students entering a traditional arts degree. So if you or if you're a parent, uh, in that case, your, your kids, if they're interested in history, if they're interested in literature or Chinese language or any of the foreign languages or art or art history, but they would like those extra employment skills, those extra skills of digital work, and they haven't done much of that yet in high school, that's where we come in. We will, we will meet them and we will teach them those additional skills as they move through the humanities degree. The usual formula applies. I'm going to leave this uh, to, the, to the questions at the end so that our administrators can talk about it. And therefore, I will just leave you with this. The Bachelor of Arts in Humanities and Digital Technologies. As Peter says, we are extremely excited about this new degree program and um, here to answer any of your questions about it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. There. Thank you, Dr. Cobb. Um, we are very excited about this program as, as well, and I'm sure we, our audience, have a lot of questions for you. Um, but before we get to that, um, I our next speaker, um, Dr. Van uh, from the HAU Business School, will tell us more about her program, which is the Bachelor of Science in Marketing Analytics and Technology. So, unlike uh, what 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 Dr. There and Dr. Cobb talk about. This program is actually a Bachelor of Science, science degree. Um, and I think Dr. Fan has prepared something very interesting on the topic. So I'll pass the time to you, Dr. Fan. Thank you very much. Um, let me first um, try to share my screen here. There you go. So everybody can see my slides. Yep. All right. So uh, thank you very much for you know your interest uh, in the program and welcome to the session. Uh, I'm Ting Ting. So um, before I start, uh, let me briefly talk about myself. Um, so uh, I did my PhD at the Stern School of Business at the NYU. Um, so um, you know I did most of my research in uh, new products, innovations, marketing using uh, big data and models. Uh, and most importantly, I'm also the deputy uh, program director of these new program, uh, marketing analytics and technology. Uh, lots of you may have this question in your mind that, uh, you know, what is so different between the traditional marketing versus the marketing analytics and technology? Well, besides that, this name, you know, sounds fancy. Uh, what is the real difference over here, right? So I'm going to start with, you know, the different views, right? So those two things are really just the different views of seeing, you know, oh, sorry, of seeing the same problems, right? So I'm going to use online dating or dating as an example to share with you my views of those two, um, two different views. So in traditional marketing, it's just like, you know, traditionally, when you or your parents thinking about who will be a good date, right, for their kids, for yourself, for your friends, traditional marketing is just like you based on your understanding of your friends or your friends' kids. And based on your experience and intuition, you thought that could be a good match, right? So traditional marketing is using mostly experience and you know, intuitions to make decisions. Even if they have certain data, right? Just like if your parents are picking up dates right, from a lot of you know, strangers, they got some data too. But those data in traditional marketing could be quite limited. For example, you know their gender, their age, their occupation, their income, their education, but only based on this, you make certain guesses. So unlike those traditional marketing, the marketing analytics and technology also look at dating problem 
who is better fit for your friend, for your, 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 your kids, but using very different approach, right? Think about Tinder. I'm sure most of you at least heard about this online dating platform, right? How does Tinder find our dates? Right, first of all, Tinder has lots and lots of people, right? So instead of you know, just looking at a very limited pool of people in your friend's kids or your friend's pool, right? Tinder has millions of users. And on top of that, right, the millions of users, for each user, Tinder is asking for the name, the age, the gender, photos, locations, or even your personality and an interest or social network. Now with all those you know, huge amount of data on millions of people, those are the data that the marketing analytics and technology will look into. On top of that, right, so based on those massive data, what Tinder is doing is not based on Tinder's experience or intuitions or guesses to recommend dates. But Tinder is using a fancy algorithm. Now, this algorithm is called Allo score, which means that whether or not that you are recommended to someone depends on this score. And this score depends on how many people like you, as well as, well as what kind of people like you. Okay, so I, I wouldn't go to the details of these Allo scores, um, but this gives us some sense between the difference of traditional marketing versus the marketing analytics. Okay? So marketing analytics mostly is using the big data plus the algorithm to make decisions. Now, big data are just like ingredients in your refrigerator. Okay? And algorithm is the cooking skills. Now, only when the good ingredients combines with master cooking skills, you can get Michelin star dishes. And this kind of recipe, right, the combination of big data and algorithm is widely used in many industries, including your Netflix. Netflix recommends movies to, you know, to different people, right, based on the massive data that Netflix gets from you. Plus, all those fancy algorithms, right, Netflix applies, you know, to the big data. Even the fashion industry, right? the fashion industry used to be determined by some, you know, people that we never see in the real world. But now, with the marketing analytics and technology, fashion industry has been looking into your Instagram pictures. They try to find out what is popular, you know, what are the popular elements on those popular pictures and try to predict what will be popular in the coming month or in the coming weeks before they make your clip. So all those, you know, industries, the marketing has changed dramatically, right? So those companies, high-tech com companies like Netflix, Alibaba, Facebook, Google, they relied on massive, you know, customer data and those complicated algorithm to provide better services and products to their customers. Even the traditional, you know, industries, traditional retailers or manufacturers, they are catching up. Right? For example, our local YUU rewards are using the big data you know, from our purchases, like including you know, buying a bottle of a drink, including buying a, a piece of bread, right? to make a prediction and then trying to make the firms as well as the consumers better off. So as you know, this marketing landscape has changed so much, right, you can see that the traditional marketing is not enough. Right? So in order to cope with the changes in the industry, we need to provide, we need to equip our students with better skills. Now, this is what we offered in this new program, the marketing analytics and technology. And this is a very unique program because now we are combining both the very traditional marketing skills, marketing senses, business senses, plus 
you know, the very hard skills from engineering, from programming, from uh, computer science, so that our students can work in the marketing industry with the knowledge of how to study the big data, how to dig information from the big data, and how to use the algorithm to provide you know, predictions and make decisions. And as you can see that our curriculum design is also very unique, right? So instead of you know, just letting students off and letting the students randomly choose you know, the courses from different departments, we actually designed a very specific curriculum for our students so that the students can take courses from the business school, right? That's for the business sense, um, plus the um, selective, you know, uh, courses from engineering, from computer uh, science programs so that they know how to do the programming. Now, after graduation, there are tons of firms which are looking for those talents. Now, those talents are very limited right now, even though there are huge demand in the industry, because right now, the market, what they have right now is all those students with traditional marketing training, but they don't have the background, they don't have the programming skills. On the other hand, they might get a bunch of students with engineering or computer science students, but they don't have any business training, right? So right now it's very difficult for the companies to find students with both skill sets. But this is what we are going to offer to the market. We have to be ahead of market a little bit so that four years from today, you know, when you or your kids are in the market, all the companies want you. All right, so I will leave all the admission details, you know, um, to our colleagues, but I hope to see you all, you know, in 2022. And we are very excited, you know, to see this program and see all of you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Than. Um, before we actually go into the admissions requirements, I would like to throw out a, few, a couple of questions actually for the speakers, because I think um, there are some very, very, very uh, interesting points that have been covered, but we would like definitely definitely like to hear more uh, from your perspective about you know the, the program about the market and also some examples um, that if you could offer uh, as many of us probably are still fairly new these are new programs by the way and um, so we definitely uh, want to have a little more uh, insider information from 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 the speakers as we um, as we explore whether or, or, or try to see whether these programs are would be a good match for the students. So meanwhile, if you have any questions, the audience has any questions, you are welcome to make use of the Q&A. Um, we will address them to, uh, towards the end. So um, um, I know Dr. Fan shared a few very interesting examples actually on Tinder, you know, um, actually real world applications of data. Dr. Cobb also talked about, you know, archaeology and how that is being uh, um, use uh, how how that actually can be combined with digital technologies, but for students, for example, um, who want to do something different, for example, uh, they they want to study history or they want to study a modern language. Um, what are some kind of uh, real world applications that that you know um, perhaps Dr. Dr. Cobb or Dr. Adair would be able to 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 share with us so that you know um, they, so they have a better understanding of what kind of jobs actually these graduates could get into. Uh, by the time they complete the program. Thank you. So perhaps I, I might start there and say, from the perspective of an arts degree, there are two angles. One is that an arts degree is at its heart an analytical and an information finding degree program. So as I was listening to Dr. Fan, one of the things I was thinking is part of the job that our students would have would be to analyze the algorithms to work out how those algorithms are working, how does that impact society, how does that develop into the future. So that, that side of a humanities degree is about finding out how things work and analysing them and thinking critically and developing new ideas and new ways forward about it. And the other half 
of that or for students who are interested in this is the building and creative side of things so that is building new applications building new databases developing new algorithms in partnership with computer programmers thinking about how this applies into the world one of the things that our graduates in arts often have as in a huge advantage is brilliant communications skills so they're often brought in to companies as communications executives, as communicators, as developers of ideas. This can lead to work in marketing from an arts degree as well, but it can also lead to a range of different uh, elements of business and business management. One really good example of where our students are going is um, that I had a student recently who graduated just from a BA. And she immediately got a job as a uh, working in communications with a Hong Kong company. And that company ultimately paid her to go and do a course in development, to do a course in digital development so she could learn to program things so that she herself could learn to develop apps for that company. And the reason that they were prepared to pay her to do that training rather than hiring people from, for example, a direct computer science degree has is two reasons behind that. The first is that there is a shortage of qualified candidates for this kind of work. And the second is because the kinds of skills that we bring, both from the um, Faculty of Arts, but also I think from this marketing degree program is communication the ability to communicate really well with, with um, consumers and customers across a range of areas. So that's one of the real world applications of this is in developing new business strategies using the particular combination of skills in, in data and in, um, in the humanities. And I would just add um, the human centered uh, information ecosystem that we're we're all involved in today. There's so much discussion about all the information and going around, and we really need to focus on how it impacts us as humans. And, and we have a, an opportunity as critical scholars to consider these issues. Uh, well, thank you very much. I've heard um, you know, lots of marketing from uh, NAS um, answers, so it makes us like competitors. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for advert, uh, advertising our program as well. Um, so I mean, real examples or real applications, you know, for marketing analytics and uh, technology are plenty. Um, as I show you, you know, um, the Tinder, you know, Netflix, all those are real applications. And um, I'd like to share with you, you know, I just finished um, teaching um, the, one of the MBA courses and uh, one of the guest speaker was um, the, um, the CMO of uh, HSBC, uh, Hong Kong. And what he told me is that it's very, very difficult to find marketing talents, you know, in Hong Kong or even globally who can process their huge amount of data. Now, the point here is that most of the company traditionally, they bought all those industry reports from McKinsey from all those consulting firms. But all those third party data now becomes outdated because right now all the companies have their in-house data, which means for example, HSBC, right? They got tons of their customer data. Before they just put it there. They don't know how to do it, right? They don't know how to analyze it. Right now, they realize that that's a huge asset in their hands. They don't rely on the outside, you know, you know, industry or, or third party data. Right now, they need people to dig into their own data. Can they hire someone outside to dig into their data? The answer is no, because you don't want your asset leaking out. So they definitely need to hire someone as their own, you know, staff to look into the data. So many, many companies have this demand, right? Alibaba, uh, Tencent, right? HSBC, right? all those you know, traditional high-tech companies are looking for those talents. And that is the reason why you know, Hong Kong U is providing this new program. Because as marketing, right, we know the demand of the market. Once there is a demand, we need to supply it we need to equip our students with those skills that are necessary in this market. Um, in, if you don't mind, uh, I've seen some of the, uh, the 
you know, the live Q&A, um, some of the students were asking, actually more than one, uh, asking about those math knowledge, you know, before you know, applying to the, uh, the program. So I would like to highlight that even though our program requires that the students, you know, applying for this program, having the science and math, you know, um, training at high school, but it doesn't mean that you need to be a genius in math and science. Because after all, you know, we're not the theoretical mathematics or theoretical physics. We are applications. We're the applications of those algorithms, of those, you know, programming, of those models, of those big data, right? So all we need to do is to know how to do it rather than the very basic thing. So the answer is yes, you need some training, right? But my answer to that is that based on that, you know, as long as you have the basic training, right? What matters most in this program is your curiosity in a marketing field, especially how to use the massive data as well as the algorithm to provide better service, better products to the world. So thank you, Dr. Ben. I think, um, Dr. Ben, you brought up a really relevant point uh, about the, the math and also the, the idea of these programs really is uh, are, are not just, you know, trying to get someone who's really, really good at math to come in and, um, and, 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 and just design all these algorithms. In fact, there is a, also a huge emphasis on how you can combine kind of like the human approach, you know, how, how, how we approach a problem, how uh, an end user is going to look at the look, look, look at uh, what is being produced. And that aspect, I think, is equally, if not more important uh, to, to excel at this program. So, um, uh, we understand now, uh, Dr. Van, we, maybe we're going ahead of ourselves a little bit. We know there is a math requirement uh, for, for, for the um, Bachelor of Science in Marketing Analytics and Technology, which obviously as it is a BSc. But for the HDT, right, for the Humanities uh, and Digital Technologies program, um, we know that it is a Bachelor of Arts. And um, I, I work with a lot of students myself, and I know that usually one of the biggest hindrance for students who, 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 who are from uh, maybe perhaps in high schools are doing like an art stream uh, coming into university is that they thought, you know, they, 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 they can be done with math. So it, it, that's the end of it. Like they're done with math, they can come to university, just focus on whichever arts or humanities streams that they, they, they will be doing. So I understand that may be a little bit different for the uh, humanities and digital technologies program. So I would like to ask, um, so I'm guessing some students would, would be turned off by the idea that they have to come in and do even more math. Um, so, so Dr. There, Dr. Cobb, any kind of insight into this dilemma here? Um, yeah. what, what, what do you think? Thank you. So this is really big for me because I also, I became an English student because I was so bad at math. And I have ended up being someone who works very closely with digital technologies, which everybody in their mind connects with mathematics. So I would really want to emphasize this, although it's going to be a little bit harder to get into the BA HDT than the standard BA. And among the requirements that need to be a little bit higher is on the math side, but in general, we are not looking for engineers. We're not looking for the, we don't expect our group of students to necessarily be the sorts of people who would have, would go into an engineering degree or into a pure mathematics degree or into a statistics degree. We are so happy to meet people where they are and they come in and they don't have much maths or they struggle with it or it's not their favorite thing to do. We're going to tackle these problems as humanities people as people who do things with language and who do things with the human question and who do things with analysis from that perspective. So all of our interdisciplinary subjects, this is what's wonderful about interdisciplinary subjects, is that you can come at the same problems, but from that other perspective, you can say, right, you're good at communicating, let's break this down as a communication problem. You're good at analyzing, let's break this down as an analysis problem. The second thing that I would say is this, one of the things we want our degree to produce is leaders and communicators. 
So we are going to have students who will learn how to work with computer programmers to develop their ideas. You don't need to do all the programming yourself to be someone who comes up with a fantastic idea and is able to implement it. You need to be someone who understands the potential of digital technology and how that potential can be developed and worked out. Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so those are that's that's what I would say about the math side of things. And I would all my, my one final point is this: I think programming is something that students who are naturally good at communicating in language can become good at very quickly. This is a group of students, and I see this year after year in uh, arts degrees at HKU, who are perfectly fine picking up a new language. Oh, I've been studying French, they'll say, adding it to the enormous list of languages they already speak. And to have that student be fearful about learning Python or some other programming language is really ridiculous because it's not it's no harder. It's just that we think of it as being a maths course. In reality, in this degree, we're going to come at it all from the humanities perspective. Thank you, Dr. Adair. Thank you again. Um... I think it, it serves as a great segue for us to go into, you know, actually the admissions requirements. So um, Edwin, um, while, I mean, uh, we're inviting more questions uh, from the audience, please do uh, give us a little bit of information about how students can be considered um, for these new Pro2 programs. Okay, thank you, Ying. And thank you, Dr. Ko. Thank you, Dr. Adair. Thank you, Dr. Fan, for sharing your insightful views and your information about your program. So for my part, <clears throat> sorry, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, I will first uh, share with you some, like for some solid hard facts about the admission information for of these two uh, big data related programs, including uh, BHTT and BSc MAT. So one second, let me share my screen first. All right, can everyone see it? Okay, so uh, so basically for my part, I will spend around uh, around 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes to talk about, uh, as mentioned by Ying and mentioned by other speakers, we have JUPIS and non-JUPIS requirements. And I also see from the Q&A, many, many parents or, or students are asking about what is the requirement uh, of these two programs. So I will talk about it here. So as mentioned, uh, we have mainly two admission pathways to, uh, uh, to get into Hong Kong U. So one is HJDSE. If you are local students uh, taking an HJDSE exam, so you'll be admitted uh, applying to Hong Kong U via a uh, JUPA scheme. And if you are non-local students uh, who are taking other national, uh, national exams or other international qualification, including IB or GCE level, SAT, et cetera, or also other uh, national qualifications. So uh, you'll be applying to the university via the non jupiter and international scheme. So meanwhile, I'm talking, feel free to ask more uh, questions about the two new programs, or if you have any uh, admission related questions, so feel free to raise it in the Q&A function. Okay, so I'll start with the JUPAS part, and later after that, I'll, I'll go on with the international or uh, non jupiter or say. So I'll start with the uh, main update of JUPAS first. So starting from this, the coming admission cycle, which is if you are admitted um, in 2022. So starting from this year, the Hong Kong U will recognize M1, M2 uh, as equivalent to a, a, a full elective in fulfilling the university entrance requirement. So, um, so this is the main update because we, uh, did not recognize M1 and M2 as a full elective before. But starting from this year, we are giving uh, a higher flexibility to the DSC students. So uh, to conclude, if you are S5 or S6, that means you, are admit you will be admitted to Hong Kong U before the 2024. Uh, this is a summary of the university entrance requirement, which is uh, level three in English and Chinese level two in uh, above in mathematics and level two above in uh, liberal studies and also two elective. So one of them must be the category A uh, secondary secondary uh, elective subject, level three above. And the other one will be M1 or M2 
or a category A elective or a category C subject. So depends what elective or subjects you are studying. So uh, as long as you can fulfill this requirement, you can apply to Hong Kong U. So I also understand that uh, with the introduction of the new uh, subject to replace the LS, which is called the Citizenship and Social Development. So after, uh, from 2024 onwards, the UER will be revised as follows. So mainly uh, the other parts will be the same, just uh, the LS level two above will be replaced by the uh, getting a attained level in the citizenship and social development. Okay, so back to the program entrance requirement. So I guess many people are uh, asking about this one. So I'll start with the BAHTT first. So for BAHTT, as mentioned by Dr. Adair, uh, you do not have any actually uh, required elective or subjects in your HADS exam, but a little bit slightly higher uh, requirement in your mathematics level, but we do not need to be afraid because we have a lot of kind of support uh, to support students uh, if you are uh, admitted to this program. So um, as also mentioned by the speaker, if you have taken uh, like math uh, extended module, which is called M1 and M2 or other ICT related subject in high school. So, uh, or you have experience in using those digital tools like Python, C++, Etc. So you will be having an advantage when uh, like taking a, taking a program, but it's not a uh, uh, like compulsory requirement. Okay. So uh, for other factors, we are also looking into the interview performance and also the number of level five starters, uh, five star or level five you got, and also the additional subject taken by you. So uh, and the third part, we have a scoring formula for every program in Hong Kong U. And for BHTT, we are looking into the uh, five subjects. So including uh, a compulsory uh, requirement in, in English and also best four subjects. If you are counting Chinese as one of your best four subjects, there will be a weighting of 1.5. Okay, so for, as you can see from here, admission score is NA because it's a new program and we do not have a previous statistics for you, but, uh, uh, if you are a GPA student, so you can pay attention to our website and social media updates because we'll be releasing uh, a score for called expected score in around uh, May to June uh, to give you a reference, like what kind of score you uh, you need to reach uh, in order to get uh, like considered by this program. So uh, stay tuned to our website. Uh, so for market analytics and technology, uh, for, he, for this program, you will be having a requirement in M1 or M2, getting a level three or above. And also uh, you will be required to get a level three or above in uh, one of the following subjects, uh, biology, chemistry, or combined science, ICT, integrated science, or physics. So one of them will, will do, plus M1, M2, and getting level three or above. And for the other uh, factors is more or less the same uh, with the BHTT program. And the scoring formula will be uh, a little bit more complicated here, but mainly we are looking into uh, six subjects, including English, math, M1, M2, and best three subject. So if you have the seven uh, subjects you are taking, so there will be a slight uh, small bonus for you uh, when calculating the admission score. And again, Emission score is not uh, available here since it's a new program. So again, please refer to our expected score to be released in May uh, and around June. Okay, so for the non jupas part, again, it's related to uh, if you are applying to the university uh, via international qualification. So this is the part you need to pay attention. So for international uh, or non jupas emissions is for IB, GCE, or other national qualifications or regional national exams. So while um, applying to the university via the, this non jupa scheme, so first you need to pay attention to the expected low boundaries of each program, including like if you are interested in BHDT program or BSC MAT program, uh, you need to check the expected low boundary, which I will be mentioned in, uh, in the, like the, the slide uh, afterwards. But you can scan the QR code here to visit our website to, to check the standard of different other Hong Kong programs. 
So other than expect low boundaries, you also need to fulfill the English requirement, second language requirement, and also program entrance requirement. If there is any required subject you need to, uh, you need to take. Okay, so for BHGT, uh, there isn't any, uh, as mentioned by Dr. De and Dr. Ko, there is very flexible and we welcome uh, different types of students who are interested in arts plus digital technologies to, to, to join this program. So there isn't any required requirement for your subject in perhaps IB and GCE. And for BSc MAT program, uh, so for IB first, uh, you need to get a uh, grade six or better in, in the standard level math or a grade five or better in high level math. And also you need to get a, a grade five or above in, in English and also at least one science subject. Okay, so for GCA level, you also uh, need to get uh, A or better in math and further math and also an A or better in science subject at the A level. So for information, for more information, you can always refer to our website because I don't want to spend a lot of time here to talk about uh, the scores and, and the formulas. So, and apart from, um, and talking about the requirements, in your online application to the non jupyter system, you also need to supplement your application with the extra curricular activities and your personal statement. And you are also uh, welcome to nominate your counselors to provide any extra information, including your transcript, uh, predicted grades, and also your reference letters, et cetera. So once you have uploaded all these kind of um, like supplementary documents, we will uh, consider your application at a holistic you know, uh, view, okay? So once again, uh, just for information, you can apply up to five programs in your non jupyter system. And also, you can also receive multiple offers if you are doing uh, good in, and yeah, if multiple uh, programs decided to, to admit you. So I guess this is the end of my part, and I'll pass the time to Ying to, uh, to answer more questions in the Q&A part. Thank you. Thank you, Edwin, again. Um, we, we, uh, we have a couple of questions. I know some of them are being addressed already. Now, um, I, I, I know there is um, probably there will be something more that our audience would like to find out regarding these two programs. I think one of the biggest questions that we have heard or we, 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 have, we have received from uh, you know, students or parents is that how this program actually sets them uh how, how these two programs actually set themselves apart from other similar programs i know we have some questions on that uh from other universities we know hdt is basically the one and only program in asia but i, I mean for the marketing for the marketing analytics program perhaps how does it uh how 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 is it different how is how how what advantage do students have if they do take it uh at hau that's uh, I, I i mean I, and i guess uh, kind of uh, also as in a in a related note what is the major advantage of difference or, or for students going into these programs directly as compared to doing, say, a traditional Bachelor of Arts or traditional Bachelor of Business Administration with a double major in, say, something uh, related to, 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 to computer science or mathematics? So um, um, I guess I can I can take that you, first. Um, so um, the what. Well, my view of the uniqueness and also most importantly uh, the strength of this new program this marketing analytics and technology program at hong kong u is that um it's interdisciplinary which means that it's not just about you know having your, your yourself or your kids sitting in the marketing you know major or just in the business school and learning some kind of you know quantitative or data skills Instead, we actually take um, steps ahead and by having the faculty, the professors from many other areas, right? So it's not just about business school, but also computer science and engineering and then having them on board in this program so that the, um, the, the skills, the skill sets are very, you know, very uh, strong for your kids. And once you've learned those basics, and we will bring you or your kids into the business field. And the other thing that we are very proud of and also very strong is that 
you know, before we send you or send your kids to this market, we're going to have them, you know, hand, you know, have those hands on experience. Because Hong Kong U Business School has, you know, collaboration with lots of companies, including the YUU Rewards, the HSBC, you know, all those companies who already have lots of data sitting in their hands, but having no people, you know, to process them. And those companies are happy to work with us, and we are happy to have our students, you know, uh, apply their knowledge, apply their skills on this, those real data on those real problems before they step into the market. And actually that would set them in a very good position when they are looking for jobs because the companies will know that you or your kids already have experience on these issues. They don't have to train you from the very beginning. And I think those are the two you know, assets of the, uh, you know, the, our new program. Um, but most importantly, the most important asset will be you or your kids, because without good students, we cannot succeed. So we are very looking forward to you know, having all of you on board. Doctor, there perhaps I will structure the question a little bit differently for you, because obviously, you know, there are no other competitors, right, um, in Asia. But I mean, what in your, in your view, what kind of students actually work well for the HDT program? What kind of students actually work well with a more traditional uh, BA? Thank you. So I think this is a, a hugely important question, and it's one that I think um, an arts degree is traditionally one of the big areas that students go into. And I believe very, very strongly in the kind of training that an arts degree provides. So I'll start there with the traditional BA. What does it give you? It gives you enormous flexibility in your mind to apply your research to a huge range of areas. One of the real strengths of an arts degree is that we don't limit students to one career or one vocation. We have students who go out into the world across a huge range of careers. So I would begin by saying this, the one thing that we can know about the future is we don't know what the future will hold. So we don't know if we train our students, if you train your, your children for one particular career, is that particular career going to still be available in the world 10 years from now, 15 years from now? The world changes so fast. And so this is where I would pick up on exactly what Dr. Fan said. This is about interdisciplinarity. The new wave of degree programs that are coming along are about teaching us how to think in multiple ways at once bringing together a range of skills instead of just training us for one thing. So in our new degree program, which is unique, that brings this big digital science data aspect into the traditional Bachelor of Arts degree, we are strongly holding on to our identity as a faculty of arts, that we're not trying to put anyone in one pocket for one potential future career. We're saying, what are you interested in? What are you passionate about? What do you love? And also here are the, the broad skills you need in analysis, in communication, in theory, in thinking, in criticizing, in building, in creating. And whatever the future holds, you're going to be able to apply that. What are we looking for in our students that's different in the digital degree versus the more traditional arts degrees? I think we're looking for students who want to lead, who want to solve problems, who want to build things, who want to create things. Students who want to take all the thinking and the passion that they have for their humanities areas and add on a digital side to it. Because for all that the future is unknowable, I think we're pretty clear that the future is digital and the future is going to be based a lot around data and what we can do with the vast amounts of data we've developed. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Peter. No, I think exactly. It's 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 the fact that everything is intertwined with digital right now, and it gives a great opportunity for students to learn uh, all you know learn these things together. This the, just to reiterate the interdisciplinarity. Thank you. You you um, Doctor Day basically addressed my 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 next question. In fact, I think a lot of the questions we get is um, what kind of students are we looking for. 
for these particular programs? Are there specific skill sets? I mean, we talk about, you know, uh, students perhaps might have an advantage if they have some sort of background knowledge, but is there anything that we're looking for in an application, uh, especially if a students are in by different interview, um, let's say, um, what kind of qualities are we looking at for these two programs? Um, I think for our program, uh, we are looking for somebody who is curious about new stuff, especially in a marketing field. Um, so as long as you pass the bars of, you know, the very basic math and science training, uh, we do need those because, you know, you're going to take the classes related to those skills. But as long as you pass the basic bars, you know, what matters more is your curiosity. Okay? because your interest, your passion in this field will become the most important factor in the success of your career, of everything. Um, so if you are looking at problems like Tinder, you know, Netflix, even when you are watching movies or TV shows, when you're walking on the street, even when you're looking at some very weird problems like prostitutions or drug dealers, you're always thinking or curious about why it happened that way, why it doesn't happen in the other way, right? How does it relate it to data, right? Like how can we solve it in a better ways? Those are the curiosities that we are looking for. That is also the reason why we're so exciting to have new brands, we have new minds from all of you. I think that uh, another thing to think about this is great this idea of curiosity is so important for us it's like also um, i mean and for the marketing i'm sure thinking about an engagement and interest in humans and in in the humanities and, and trying to understand you know everything about us and that we get so many students who are just so passionate about about these topics in the humanities and then having an open mind to be able to work with other people from other disciplines yeah exactly oh, sorry uh, I yeah, I was just one last thing from me is that um, students are all, always, you know, feared about, you know, engineers or models or data, but think about it, right? Which one is more difficult? Talking to a machine or talking to a human being? Which one is more predictable, right? Talking to a machine is just one plus one equal to two. Following certain patterns and logics, simple as that. Talking to a human being, think about you talk to your mom. Okay, how difficult is that? Right? So if you know how to talk to your mom, you definitely know how to talk to your computer. Okay? Thank you. And so all I would add to that is that, yes, we, I often get questions from students. Is there any advantage if I've done a certain subject? Is there any advantage if I've studied this in high school? The answer for an arts degree is no. Everybody comes in, everybody has different interests. It's a big faculty, it's got a lot of ideas in it. The degree is big and broad. Even adding technology in doesn't mean that we're giving any advantage to people who have studied particular courses. For advice on if you get called into interview and you have questions, what to do, perform the things that Dr. Cobb and Dr. Fan have been talking about, your interest and your curiosity. We don't need you to know the answers to anything in interview. That's not the point of an interview. So if you or if your kids are called into an interview and they're looking for advice, tell them this, tell them ask questions and say that you're excited about the things you're excited about. That's it. That's all you need to do to do brilliantly at interview. Thank you, Dr. There, I think we you, you pretty much wrap up the whole session for us. Um, that's the word of advice for students who are interested to, to get into these programs uh, from the directors themselves. So we hope the discussion today will um, really serve as a beginning of the dialogue on, you know, kind of the interdisciplinarity that we'll talk about, you know, how to explore your ideas, how to actually make it work and make it uh, approachable, make it personable. I think those are the, the discussion that we, we would like to see being uh, carried on uh, within the context of the program or at, at, or at HAU at large. So thank you very much, uh, students and parents. Uh, we, are, uh, we really appreciate you joining us tonight. And uh, there'll be one more session uh, on our new uh, double degree program in science and law uh, coming this Friday. Um, do feel free um, to register for the session. It's still not too late. 
I do want to find out more. So thank you again, Dr. Dare, Dr. Kopp, Dr. Finn. Um, and we hope to see you again.